Jones, you missed it yesterday. I actually wore R- my RG3 jersey yesterday. Oh, that's true. That's true. Uh, yeah, RG3. We got the new, next RG3 with uh, Daniel. So, yeah. Actually, yeah. Hold on, let me just see if I can get the screen share going and I can show the RG3 jersey. Um, let me just, I realize I, I reset something earlier. And I need to make. I'm surprised RG3 is talking about WNBA basketball. I guess he's in everything. Yeah. Um,. Yeah, I found that interesting too. Uh, I was kind of surprised by that, um, but yeah, I'll show this. Oh, let's, I click the wrong button. And then I'll start. Speaking of WNBA basketball, it seems like basketball in DC are cursed because the Wizards had one of their worst seasons this past season, and the Misses have yet to win a game. Yeah, it was. It's been pretty bad. I don't. Ouch. There, there's some talk about it. Maybe we made the wrong call on. Um, on who to to pick, but Arun, do you think that any of that would have made much of a difference? Um, I guess they probably just should have tried to tank last year for Caitlin Clark. But other than that, no, not I don't. They did let go like their point guard uh, Cloud, I think, um, and she's talking trash about them. So they it just looks like they don't have uh, their best players, and it looks like it's going to be a struggle. And um, hopefully, they pick it up sometime soon. Yeah, so I just wanted to fast forward a little bit here. Uh, you can see the RG3 uh, jersey. By... We sh- I had an Alfred Morris jersey. And I surprisingly don't have an RG3 jersey, though. <laughs> so there's proof uh, that he was wearing the RG3 jersey as we're walking into Audi Field. Um, and, uh, In case so, you thought he was lying. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, we're going to... Uh, not that anyone thinks it's... The champs line but uh it, it was good it was a it was a fun night and um yeah or a fun day yesterday so did you guys we'll... contribute to the beer snake uh we did no. not contribute wrong to section but next I, time <laughs> i i do have some footage of the beer snake that we'll be showing here uh that you can see um uh there uh that section was lit all game long yeah, it was pretty awesome uh, for sure. Um, they were chanting random shit throughout the whole game. It was just crazy to just. I was just like, I kept telling Tim and 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 CB3 and 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 Rob, I was like, I want to be in that section because they are absolutely lit over there. Yeah, that's where I got t- well free tickets randomly lot before COVID, I guess. And the beer snake was in full of. Oh, Tim also went to that game. And then the highlight was four guys wearing t- uh, four different Tim Tebow jerseys, like. Speaking of random quarterbacks, <laughs> that's pretty hilarious. Um, so, um, everyone, you can stay on if you want to. Oh, as we discuss this, I know you weren't there yesterday, but you know, I, I, whatever you want to do, if you want to jump off and just be in chat, or if you want to be with us, I, I'll I, stay uh, on. I'll I'll yeah. chime in. I watched a little bit of the game, but not that much because I couldn't even. I had to go make a ride, but I I was able to watch a little bit of the game. Cool. All right. So I made this video so we could kind of walk through the adventures uh, that we did uh, and kind of do like a Madden hold it here moment, um, you know. Uh, and uh, so this was my fit for yesterday. You know, repping the District of Champions merch, which you can get on sports.thp.com. Also repping the Valor. So we got all, all four champions. Um, and then we had an awesome uh, brunch before we went in. Um, this, uh, I know it's a little blurry, uh, but uh, is calamari. Uh, Tim got the nachos that were good. The wings were good that Champ and uh, Carol were eating. I also had um, a tuna tower and we had beer. So it was, it was a good brunch um, for sure. Uh, and then this is us walking uh, into Audi Field, which is a really cool stadium. I really like. Um, this is our first, my first time uh, at this stadium. And Champ, it was your first time too, right? Correct. It was my first time there too. And uh, like I've mentioned before, the firm that I work for sponsors DC United, so their name was plastered on one of the pillars as well as on a couple of little banners that were over top of the uh, uh, the the stands of opposite of us. So it was great to see that. I actually mentioned that to my team today during our team meeting and stuff. So I got to send a picture just to show them like, yeah, we out here. Yeah. Can you turn up your mic just a little bit more champ? Is that possible? Let me see. You just, you're, you're coming in just slightly low on my end. There you go. Perfect. That's much better. Thank you. Um, 
so uh but yeah so then this is what the stadium looks like i really liked our view uh we were about the uh, you know 35 40 yard line um and on the visitor side uh, i really love uh, you know you should definitely get these sort of side seats if it's going to be really sunny or rainy or any sort of weather conditions because uh, we're covered uh, the other two sides uh, are much cheaper tickets but um you're obviously exposed to the elements especially if it's like a hot day or a sunny day um and uh so yeah i'm gonna just click the play button where we can walk through some of these different things uh this was a great running play you can sort of see the end of it but i really kept the recording going uh so it could show the replay which you'll see right here in a second um that i um that i zoom into over there um so you can see here he cuts uh right and he just you know it was a really a big gain especially when we were down three nothing uh it was a big running play there um and then um obviously uh they then uh scored uh but they gotta you gotta watch this run back so i can't believe carol got this shot so um we take it at the 18 yard line and i like how he jumps over this guy he's in a crowd he somehow escapes um and um uh, he uh takes it all the way to the end zone um so it was uh it was a, a big time touchdown there um and i'll pause it there but it was so cool to see um i think it's the first run back in ufl history uh, for the season right but the ufl didn't exist before the season right so, yeah so yeah um but it's definitely the first by the defenders this year. By the way, I found out why my mic was so low. Somehow my settings had the microphone volume down to eight, yeah. even though I had it up to like 90 for my podcast, it went down to eight. So yeah. I fixed that. Yeah, there you go. Now you're coming in uh, loud and clear for sure. Um, uh, so, yeah, I mean, what were your thoughts, champ, on that on that run back? Oh, man, that was electrifying, especially because we were already – down i think we were down six nothing at this point after they got two field goals we first off we came into the stadium they had already started the game so we missed the first drive where they made a field goal which i got to watch back in the highlights it was a pretty decent drive by arlington but then um after they got another field goal to get this big this is right after that second field goal uh they we got the kickoff return for a touchdown so it was a big time play uh, for the commanders, I mean, not the commanders, the, the defenders. I'm already thinking about uh, fall. Um, and it was an electrifying thing. And it was even funnier because we were we were sitting in a section that was surrounded by Arlington Renegade fans who were there for uh, their kick returner, uh, Marigold, who was a local from the, uh, from the area. He's from Baltimore. And so they apparently they came two buses deep to uh, – Audi field to cheer him on and so they were all all they were like loud as hell behind us and stuff like that and so it was really satisfying to sit in front of them and watch them have to watch this the first ever ufl kickoff return for a touchdown against their team it was absolutely awesome it was absolutely electric i love the back and forth that we had with them all day because they were so respectful you know we we're talking trash as fans do uh, but it was always respectful and it was just a lot of fun. Yeah, they're from Baltimore. So, um, yeah, I know that they talked a lot about um, the, you know, being a Ravens fan and an Orioles fan. So Tim can appreciate that. Um, and uh, so it, it, it was good fun. I kind of I prefer to sit with people, the opposing team, if we're going to lose, just because at least it makes it more exciting. If it had been like zero opposing team fans there and they had won, I think that would have kind of sucked even more like. You know, because, like, at least somebody went home happy, you know, and, like, and having that back and forth was entertaining. I do have to say, we missed a lot of extra points, you know, so, you know, two-point conversions, one-point conversions. And in a game where we only lost by one point, like, that, I felt, really came back to bite us in the ass, as well as missing the field goal. But um, overall, I thought it was a really well-played game. But, Tim, what are, what are your thoughts on uh, this run back? I, I thought the run back came at the perfect time because if you guys remember the offense really played poorly in begin and early in the game, they couldn't really do anything, even though they actually had a uh, good field position a couple times, all they really had was, uh, you know, a field goal, I think in the second quarter. So without this touchdown, they would have been down at halftime and probably, really concerned about how they could just move the ball and get a few first downs. 
So I felt like this was at the perfect time to to, to grab the lead, but also kind of juice the team up a little bit because the defense came to play, but the offense was was not sharp. It kind of it, it definitely came alive in the second half, but this got the crowd going and and the offense and um like you said, I mean that those missed kicks and missed extra points which have to be conversions were huge i feel like that one that was overturned on the challenge where it was like a tight end wide open caught it but the d-back knocked it out late um could have been called a catch to be honest but that was uh, that was really the difference because I, that would have been one or two points so it's either going to overtime or um they win in regulation with if if they keep that conversion that was call to catch um on the field yeah for sure um arun did you get to see that play before this or any thoughts on it i think arun's muted sorry i like adrian stream on the background didn't want to get that <laughs> so uh yeah I, uh the only play i really saw was that like the out of like the the pass they completed the renegades that was like one foot inbounds and one foot out of bounds. So it thought, looked like the defenders had the momentum at that point, but I just saw the highlights. I didn't watch that from back live, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm also opening Adrian on another tab, so that way you can get the view. Um, the uh, Yeah, I, I was just really impressed. I, I hadn't realized that there hadn't been one. And, you know, this is the 10th game of the season – for us, but obviously, um, you know, all the teams have played all their games except for one that was after us, I think. So I was just, I, I hadn't realized that it had not happened yet. Uh, so this is the next really exciting play. Uh, I thought this was a really great uh, pass down the side, sort of an elusive move, and um, made two guys miss. And uh, I thought it was a pretty uh, pivotal uh, touchdown. At that point, uh, we were up 15 to 6 with two minutes left. Um um and so the beer snake you can start to see is growing uh we're kind of up to the first rung here um and then uh obviously um they come back and score right before halftime i don't show that highlight but then we come back right after halftime march down the field and a couple of pass interference calls gets us uh down there uh, but a nice touchdown. Uh, this is this touchdown is actually called back, and they said it's down at the one, but they just run it in, um, you know, for uh, the touchdown. You can see the beer snake is already growing here, um, and um, and so it's cool to watch how they add to the beer snake. Uh, so you can see here, the big groups of people are going around the stadium grabbing these big, you know, sections, and then they go and they add it to the snake. Um, uh, to help it grow and uh, the things that you don't get to see on TV. Um, this is another really great play here uh, with a uh, pass down uh, the side here, wide open. The guy was caught looking, um, which uh, and then you can see uh, the snake get to pretty much the final spot because they do take it down before the fourth quarter now. Uh, by the way, by the way, Robbie, one thing you you didn't mention is that the after that touchdown catch came after their original touchdown catch was called back on a holding call. So that was after the holding that negated the touchdown. They went right back to him and he scored. Yeah, that's very true. It's a good point. And um yeah, a lot of uh weird uses of super challenges in this game. There was a safety that you know was a weird, you know, rule call in this game. There know. was a hell of an argument about that being a safety in our section. <laughs> so for people that don't know, the rule in the UFL is a little bit different, um, in the sense that they um in the NFL, if you're in the end zone, your knee is down and you're holding the ball on the one yard line. It's down by contact at the one yard line. But if you, even if you take it afterwards and grab it back over, but in the UFL, if you put your knee down and you bring the ball across the plane, they call that a safety. And sure enough, um, I thought those two points would matter. It ended up not mattering in this game, but uh, just an interesting rule um, that was different. Um this was a pretty cool interception as well uh, that Carol got uh, live. Um, our guys kind of bump into each other at the end of that, uh, but they were able to get the interception. 
Um, but the reality is that they, they missed a field goal on this drive that ended up hurting them. And um, the other team goes down and, and scores the touchdown. And that missed field goal and those missed two-point conversions overall really kind of hurt us. I love this uh, picture of all of us, though. Uh, we still had a great time. Um, and I really hope that people come out and support this team. I'm a little nervous about the attendance numbers across the league this year. Uh, the viewership on TV numbers have been good, uh, but I know that we supported this team when they were really good last year. I hear that when people went to them, it was full, it was rowdy, and I know it could get there again. Um, but yeah, you know, I've been hearing through a lot of online, through a lot of these message groups that we're in on Facebook, uh, that people are giving up their season ticket. Uh, they said they're going to go to a couple of games, individual games. And I have to say that they haven't really given enough incentive for people to have season tickets in the sense that people can go and buy them for $20 a pop for just a couple of games they want. Why are they buying all five of them? And the year before they had promotions and better deals and you could go on the field and there was all these things that you could get. And they've taken a lot of that away when they moved from the XFL to the UFL. And they have to be careful because this league is kind of teetering in my mind. You know, they, they've probably got another year or two of goodwill because, you know, Fox slash ABC slash ESPN uh, want to have a product that they can put on TV, you know, during these months, you know, especially after March Madness, right? But they still have to hit certain attendance numbers and they still have to hit certain TV numbers. And if it declines drastically from where it is right now, I don't see this league lasting more than two more years. But if attendance numbers can go up for us and for some of the other teams, across the league, I think this could be a very successful league. So I just feel like we're really at this point in history of this league that people are going to have to commit to, even if they're not going to be season ticket holders next year, going to enough games where it matters. Um, and I thought for me, the fan experience was great. I had such a great time. And I'm going to ask each one of you guys that now I'll start off with you, Tim, uh, Tim, what was your overall thoughts on the game um and the fan experience and is there anything that you would like to see them do going forward i i thought a couple positives were i like having a football team in the city on the metro it's just better than pg county you know getting there all quickly without having to worry about parking or like crazy crowds after is nice i also think the crowd atmosphere is more positive than the NFL. I mean, both crowds love to drink, let's be honest, but it's because it's not as hardcore yet. Like people are still figuring out the players and which teams they love. Um, like, like people were saying, the visiting fans were kind of friendly and you're able to talk a little smack, but it's not bad. It's not negative. It's not the end of the world. If your team wins or lose, loses and i think the beer snake is great i think the size of the stadium is is great because it doesn't look bad if they have like ten thousand people and they could definitely sell that out for a big game um i just think they need to do something more with the rosters like in terms of building fan loyalty to the players they had a ton of turnover and it, it's just hard because that's why they don't really sell many jerseys with player names because like the roster is all different and we can't expect to have a lot of those guys next year. So because it, it's tough because obviously the best guys are going to go to the NFL or CFL or something, but I wish they could do more to get continuity like on the roster. So people will start to buy jerseys and show up for like certain players. Yeah, I agree. Um, also maybe cheaper merchandise, you know, that is, uh, cause people are selling outside the game and, you know, uh, I would almost rather do that. Um, you know, it's just, it's expensive and you kind of have to, the fact that there's nothing that's like, I don't know, I, people like to rep certain players and they need to get a real branding identity behind a player knowing that they could easily leave. And so they, they're they going to struggle with that, um, for sure. But I loved the fan experience. I really enjoyed uh, going to a game at Audi Field, I would go there again. I really, especially on Sundays where the you know, Metro is $2 each way and free parking. 
um, was definitely the way to go and get a couple of drinks maybe before you go um, and some food. And, uh, but they seem to have really good vendors there too. Um, and uh, the crowd that was there was you know pretty into it, I thought, um, and uh, for both teams. And Champ, what were some of your thoughts? I do have to agree about the merch being quite expensive. I got a hat and a tank top and it cost me almost 80 bucks for a hat and a tank top. So that's something that, you know, that's dollars. So huh? yeah, if you, if you bought the like scalper merch, you know, it's like 10 bucks. So it's right. Like, exactly. You know, that's a big disparity. So yeah, exactly. But I have to agree with Tim that, and I said this in our group chat when I got home on Sunday that, you know, it was a much better fan experience at Audi Field than I've ever experienced at FedEx Field. Uh, and the great thing about it being that it's metro accessible, even though it is a bit of a walk, it's like a 15 minute walk from the metro station to uh, the stadium. But it's luckily it's all flat. So you don't have to go worry about going up and down hills, especially if you have bad knees or bad uh, hips or that, what have you. It's a nice, flat, cool walk. Uh they have great traffic enforcement, so that way you don't have to worry about getting hit by a car or anything like that. Um, the stadium itself looks absolutely amazing from the inside, uh, and you know it's it's just a great it's a great atmosphere. And like you mentioned earlier, you know, have being on the side with uh, of opposing fans and us having that friendly banter back and forth about our teams. I know there was one that one that one touchdown. Uh, that we scored. I know where uh, Dew broke the tackle on the out route and took it to the house. I know I stood up with my arms in the air like this and looked at the one dude with the renegade shirt like, what's up, you know, <laughs> because, you know, we was having fun. It was a, it was a fun time. It was a fun experience. Um, the food, the food there is pretty cool. Like I got a pretzel and, and a beer. I think that was like 26 bucks, which is the norm, honestly, for going to any kind of stadium. So I wasn't expecting anything different. But it was a really good experience. And then the great thing was filing out, it wasn't as bad as like trying to get out of FedEx field. Because, again, most people take the metro there. So you're just basically following the crowd to the metro. And then you just get on the metro and go on home, go on home about your business. And then the fact that it was on a day where metro is only like $2 uh, one way or $4 for a round trip, it was great. So I would definitely do it again. And I would absolutely like enjoy it my time because it was, it was just great. And then again, we got ourselves a great game, even though we lost, it was still a very close game. It wasn't like they were blowing us out. We had to make a comeback to get to there. It was very close. It was a close game. It was, it, we could, any, it was anybody's game. It's just that they managed to find a way to hold it all, hold off and win by one to finish the season with a win. While, whereas we finished our season one and one and finished our season at, at four and six, uh, which is a far cry from what we did last year, making it all the way to the championship game. So, but I had a blast. I would do it again and again and again, honestly. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely have to do this as a annual tradition to all go together to a game. Um, and if not more than one, you know, I, um, it, it's hard, you know, with little kids like to commit to many games. That's why I wouldn't do a season tickets, but I would definitely go to one of these late season games again, when the weather is nice like this and, um and now knowing that that there is covered on the side like i would get another one in those seats so even if it, you know I, I, my big worry was like i wouldn't want to get tickets too early because it could get rained on you know without knowing the weather but like if you wore a rain jacket to the stadium you could take it off on the side and be fine you know like it wouldn't it wouldn't be like your uh it wouldn't be bad at all so right you know, there's definitely a lot more coverage in that regards than there is at fedex field um, I think the only worry, though, is if you do go to a game and it's raining and even if you sit in a covered section, just the walk to and from Metro is where yeah, the concern yeah, would be. A rain jacket to like or a poncho to throw on or whatever, but it's not the end of the world. You know, like it's definitely now doing it. I would say that it's more doable than I thought going into it for sure. You know, I was like, I would only wanted to do it if it was good weather before. And I was actually honestly a little concerned I'd get sunburned. And so to no that we got coverage from that too is kind of nice, especially at a noon game when the sun's so high, you know, for the middle of it. So, uh, right. yeah, so it's. And then the other great thing, which you commented on, on when we were on our way to our 
destinations to split up was the fact that the game ended and there's still enough of the day left to go and do something else. Yeah. That extra hour, I know it's not a lot. Like I know the NFL game started at one, but it makes a difference because you're still getting home at like five, even if it's an hour journey or whatever, instead of getting home at six, you know? And like, um, and also the time of the year is so different too, because you're getting home at six in the fall, you know, it's already getting dark where you're getting home at five, you know, north towards the summer, there's still a couple hours of light after that, you know? So it's just, you know, um, overall, I just thought it was a great experience and I just want people to know about it. Cause I tell so many people about this and they're like, Oh, I never even heard of that before. You know? So like, yeah, like the dude that was sitting behind us didn't even know the rules of the XFL. Yeah. He's cheering for an XFL, a, a UFL team, even yeah. though he didn't know a lot of the rules of the UFL. Yeah. But, um, yeah, for sure. It was, um, anyway, uh, I, I know it's late, so I'm going to let Tim and Arun go. And I know that we're going to just do a quick uh, segment, but I do want to thank Tim and Arun. For yeah, thanks, fun. guys. And uh, Tim, congratulations on the on the big Orioles win today. Um, uh, and thanks. did fall, unfortunately. Uh, they did try to make a comeback in the ninth inning, uh, but fell just a run shy uh, in their game. We're not going to cover the Mystics tonight. Uh, other than the fact to say that they have yet to win a game. Um, yeah, Champ was saying they're winless still, so that's sad. Yeah. But so, not this, not, not not happening this season. So hopefully they'll draft somebody well. They almost beat the Liberty their last game. Almost beat the Liberty, but then the Liberty went on a nice on a nice run towards the tail end of the fourth quarter to put the game out of reach. Um, and that was one of the closest games they've had in the first eight. Uh, the other close, uh, the they had a – they lost by three to the Mercury, but that wasn't even close. It came down to um, uh, to tail end for them to come back, but the comeback failed. And then another one where they came up short, it came down to a three-pointer from damn near half court just to get it to within three before, and they ended up still losing that game. So there are some games where they scrap and they fight in those games, but they're just not winning them. And so this is definitely going to be a very tough season for this team. I really wish Elena Dana Don was, uh, was, was playing. I know she's taken some time off from playing basketball because she had been dealing with a bad back. So hopefully she either returns this season or next season. And I think this team will be a much better team with her on the floor than they were, than they are with her not on the floor, honestly. For sure. All right. So I'll let uh, Tim and Arun go, but thank you guys. Yeah. Have a good one, guys. Part of it. And um, see uh, you guys. Yeah. I appreciate you. Uh, Have the beer snake for all four quarters and three hours after the game. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, That's later. Um, The big idea. All right. So, all right. We. I've come to the wrestling portion of the show, man. Well, let's not forget about the DC United. They had a pretty decent three match stretch. They didn't win, but they only lost one and they tied two. Uh, they uh, tied against Chicago and against Toronto. Uh, their one loss was against Montreal and Montreal. Um, the Montreal game was crazy. Six goal game between the two teams. Uh, Montreal won it four to two. Uh, the Chicago, the uh, Toronto game was even crazier because Washington, the DC was actually down going into extra time, but because of two red cards in the second half, the second red card led to a penalty shot, which ended up going in the net to tie. And that's how the game ended was with the tie after the penalty shot goal was made. Uh, Christian Bentenke is definitely the MVP of the DC United. This man has 13 goals on the season already. Uh, and we're still early on in the season. I mean, he's absolutely killing it. He got um, two of the uh, his uh, his twelfth and thirteenth goal in the Montreal game. I think he has more than thirteen. I think he. I, I don't know if he. Sc- I don't think he scored in the uh, Toronto game. But he has thirteen goals so far this season, and there's still plenty of of, of of soccer to play. So that number could definitely go up. He he he's on pace to have at least twenty or thirty goals this season for DC United. So I think that Christian Bentenke is what Freddie Freddie Amadou should have been. 
Right. Freddie I do, I should say. What yeah. Freddie I do should have been when he got when he brought got brought to DC United. I think that's what Christian Bentenke is, is what Freddie Adu should have been when he came here. And, but uh a, a decent stretch of three matches there for DC United. At least they earned points in those. Uh they didn't go winless. Well, they did go winless, but they still earned points in um in those games so they they they're they're making good pace and they need to continue to earn points but they need to get wins like draws are good that's one point awesome but they need to get those three point win they need to get those wins to get those three points they need to get up in the in the in the in the table because if they continue to not get these three points and these wins or they keep losing they they're not going to make it into the eastern conference uh playoffs yeah for sure and then one other thing is they now have higher games played than a lot of the other teams that they're competing with. And so, you know, eventually that's going to, you know, come back to hurt them, you know, with the other teams having games in hand. Uh, I will say that they find themselves in the 10th spot um, right now um, with 19 points. So they're tied with the ninth place team, uh, which is Nashville. And they're only one point behind Philadelphia um, and a total of, five points behind seventh place Columbus crew. And I'll just remind people that the eighth and ninth place teams play each other as the wild card entrance uh, for uh, the MLS playoffs. Uh, the winner of that gets to play Miami, um, who's been the best team all season. Uh, they have Messi who already has 12 goals and 13 assists, um, you know, for, um, uh, you know, which is pretty wild. Uh, but Bentenke is in second place with 13 goals, so he does have 13, uh, according to MLS st stat tracker. So, um, yeah, yeah, like I said, I know he scored, he scored, he scored the only the lone two goals that DC United had against Montreal. By the way, Montreal, I, I'm surprised that Montreal has such a wild uh soccer uh crowd. I would expect them to not be as lit. I didn't expect them to be as lit as they were for that soccer game because I'm thinking they're more of a hockey place because of the, the Canadians and stuff like that. But they actually have a really good soccer following, and they really showed up and showed out for this game, and, and it was really, really, really good to watch uh, and stuff like that. But this is, again, a decent stretch for United, but they got to pick it up if they're going to uh, contend for the playoffs. They got to pick it up. They got to get wins. Draws are okay, but they got to get wins. Otherwise, they're going to be left behind. So the upcoming game that they've got coming out this week is against Charlotte. It's going to be at Charlotte, which is the fifth place team. So this is an opportunity right there against a team that's better than them on the road. But, you know, one that if they could still win against could uh, help them a lot in the standings uh, going forward. So, um, yeah, uh, so that is the MLS update. Um, I will just mention in the standings that Baltimore is just behind the Yankees. They're 38 and 20. The Yankees are 42 and 19. Uh, so the Baltimore is only two and a half games back in the AL East. And then in the NL East, you know, the Nats have been doing pretty well. They are uh, now five games under uh, 500 um, and 14 games back, but it's still a respectable 27 and 32. Um, and uh, I'm seeing improvement from them over what they were last season. And we just got to continue that uh, improvement going forward um, mm -hmm. for that. Uh, I am going to change my graphics really quickly because I do want a quick uh, wrestling update. And then we're going to uh, rate our friend Adrian, uh, who is already live. Um, so um, let me just change our graphics to the no spots one, uh, do the champ command so people can see um, as well. But champ, uh, what's happening in the world of wrestling? Yes, yeah, so um, in Japan, the best of the Super Juniors tournament is now down to the final two. Uh, El Desperado, who this will be his third finals appearance uh, in his uh, history of being in the best of Super Juniors tournament, he defeated uh, Doki in the main event of the semifinals in Corcoran Hall uh, on Monday. Uh, he will take on uh, Taiji Ishimori, a bullet club, uh, who will be making only his second finals appearance in his career. His first finals appearance was actually back in 2018, where he was defeated. He was beaten by Hiromu Takahashi, who would win his first of what would go on to be four 
uh, best of super junior tournament so that tournament final will take place during the dominion and osaka joe hall event taking place sunday june 9th uh it will actually be the main event for the first time it'll actually main event over the iwgp world heavyweight championship match that's taking place which will be on this the semifinal match uh john moxley defending against evil in a lumberjack death match basically it's a lumberjack match where anything goes uh evil will have his house of torture stay around ringside while John Moxley will have Shota Umino and members of what's known in New Japan as the third generation which is uh, guys who helped pave the way for a lot of the New Japan stars like Yuji Nagata, Hiroyoshi Tenzan, Togi Makabe, Tiger Mask along with Shota Umino. So it'll be a five on five on the outside and uh, one on one on the inside of the ring for uh for the championship and uh the if complete card is up i just haven't i gotta find a, a site that has the card in english because on the new japan website they're still fixing up so it's only in japanese so i gotta find a one that's uh available in english so i can find out the full card but that's going on uh wwe just completed king and queen of the ring recently and uh walter also known as Gunter, became the king of the ring in controversial fashion with Randy Orton having his shoulders up throughout the kick, the t- uh, the three count, but it was still a three count counted. And uh, he won that, uh, the king of the ring. He now gets a shot at Damian Priest's uh, World Heavyweight Championship at Survivor Series. Nia Jax defeated Lyra Valkyria in the queen of the ring tournament final to win queen of the ring. She will get a shot at Bailey and the WWE Women's Championship at SummerSlam. Uh, so that all that's going on. Uh, there's the next uh, premium live event happening is going to be Battleground for NXT, and it's actually taking place at the UFC Apex in Las Vegas. So that merger between UFC and WWE is about to really show itself in collaboration with uh, WWE using a UFC venue for an event, and it'll be one of their premium live events, which is going to be NXT Battleground coming up on Sunday, uh, which is going to be headlined by. Uh, one match that's already been known is that uh, Roxanne Perez, who's the NXT Women's Champion, will defend her championship against an outsider and a current champion in another promotion, TNA Knockouts World Champion Jordan Grace. This is going to be the first time in the history of WWE that they're going to have an outside champion challenge for one of their championships at an event. And it's going to happen in Vegas, and it's going to be a history making event and i swear I, I cannot wait to talk about that we'll be live reacting to that on sunday and we'll be building to that uh this coming saturday with the uh podcast taking place on saturday to preview that friday will be the uh penultimate episode for the season of best of super juniors rewind uh we'll be looking back at the final nights of block action for best of super juniors and the semifinals and preview dominion and the finals of best of the super juniors uh 31 sage has already won the predictions battle between myself him and um sip so basically it's just basically a victory lap for him on this one but it's going to be great to talk about the fact that we all said that Des- desperado this was his year to finally win best of the super juniors after making the finals two previous times and coming up short to Hiromu takahashi this is going to be finally the year that he puts it all together he wins it and he ends up getting his shot to become junior heavyweight champion again for the fourth time in his career so that's what's going on in wrestling if you want to learn more make sure you check us out we stream live on twitch twitch.tv slash true no spots pod audio versions go up on spotify and app amazon music you can check out the partners button on sports otshp.com for previous episodes to get yourself caught up on what's going on in the wrestling world I appreciate it. I want to go back to the one thing that you mentioned because I want to. So, it's one women's champion from each promotion or battling against each other. Like, how does that work? But with titles on the line. So here's so what it is is that Jordan Grace already made an appearance in WWE this year as part of the Royal Rumble, uh, and this is not the first time this has happened because Mickey James a couple of years ago also came into the Women's Royal Rumble as a TNA World uh, Knockouts World Champion. So they started somewhat having a relationship with TNA, having Mickey James come back as the champion with the championship on her on her waist, playing her TNA music. 
to enter the Royal Rumble. And so they did it again this year with Jordan Grace, but now they're taking the relationship a little bit further by having Jordan Grace not only make an appearance in the Royal Rumble, but she will be challenging Roxanne Perez for the NXT Women's Championship. And this coming Tuesday on NXT, she's actually going to have a match on NXT uh, against Stevie Turner, who is a standout from NXT UK before that went uh, before that went away. So it's 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 a very historic time we are living in. The fact that WWE, which was famously known as having its own atmosphere when it came to wrestling, they're starting to open up doors from other promotions and let letting their people go to other promotions like Shayna Baszler was a featured uh, competitor in um, Josh Barnett's blood sport as part of GCW's uh, weekend during a uh, WrestleMania weekend. Uh, and so was Charlie Dempsey and uh, uh, Zoe Stark as well. Zoe Stark was uh, Shayna Baszler second for her matchup uh, that she had. So their WWE is, now that Vince McMahon is no longer in the picture, Triple H has shown that he has a much bigger picture for the wrestling industry than what Vince had. And he's opening up doors and he's creating these relationships. There's like there's a lot of talk about sending wrestlers over to Japan to work with uh, the new promotion over there, Marigold, which is uh, which was uh, founded and run by the man who uh, created Stardom. And so there's all that going on. A lot of stuff is going on in wrestling that we couldn't even fathom happening even four or five years ago, but it's happening. It's just wild to me that these promotions would risk their people, you know, getting injured on a different promotion, you know, either way. And also championships and stuff like that. Like how, um, you know, like how does that work? Cause you know? Well, well, Jordan Grace's championship is not on the line, so that's not really the big concern. But I could see where the concern would be at that she's a champion going against someone else's champion. She runs the risk of losing, and then she kind of loses the lust of her championship run. Yeah. But at the same time, if she's losing to another champion in another promotion, there's not really – I don't see much of a, a, of a risk in that. And plus, I'm pretty sure that she's going to come – she's going to look – really really strong in this matchup so i don't think it's going to really hurt her that much uh jordan grace because she's been doing an amazing job as the knockout champion this is i think her third or fourth reign as knockouts world champion and i think that uh, i think that her having a match outside of tna and really showing how good she is as a professional wrestler i think that's more important than her actually winning the nxt women's championship uh, in, in my opinion, I think that so. Spoiler alert I'm already going to give my prediction that Jordan Grace is not winning the NXT Women's Championship, but she's going to put on a hell of a performance and she's going to put on a performance that's going to make Roxanne look like a really, really good champion by her beating a really strong, dominant champion like Jordan Grace. So I think everybody wins here in this, in my opinion. This isn't a lose lose situation, even if Jordan Grace somehow wins the NXT Women's Championship, you now have a champion on another promotion that's showing up on this promotion, which gives promotion for both brands simultaneously. And even if Jordan Grace loses, which she will, she's going to put on an amazing performance. Roxanne's going to have to step her game up in order to give a good performance, but I know she will because she's been wrestling since she was like 15 or 16. So she's not new to this game. She Roxanne's been in the game for quite a bit. Uh, she's been a champion before. She, she was the first Ring of Honor Women's Champion when they brought that championship back. And then she became an NXT Women's Champion before. So this is her second Reigns NXT Women's Champion. So I expect this to be in a, in a really, really good contest. And I think everybody wins in the end. For sure. All right. Well, this has been a great show. It went 40 minutes longer than I expected, as they always do. Um, but I really appreciate all the guests for being a part of such an awesome podcast. This is the spring season finale. It's just so hard for me to believe that we're already here in June. Uh, but I want to, in reverse order, thank everyone for being here. Thank you, obviously, Champ, um, for you know covering all the different sports that you do. But Arun and Tim and C-Dub in the previous uh, segment, uh, I love talking NBA with them. And then before that, obviously having Scott Firestone Rocks drums, um, as well as C4 
and Adrian on to talk hockey. Um, it, it's been a really fun uh, show across a lot of things. By uh, the way, Robbie, I would like I would like to tell you that uh, when you come back for the Olympics, uh, I will definitely cover the wrestling uh, because the wrestling the the schedule shows that it starts on August the fifth. Uh, and so I will definitely cover the wrestling because they're doing it's three different types. They're going to do uh, men's Greco Roman and men's freestyle, and they're going to do women's freestyle. And it's six weight divisions for each uh, type, so it's going to be twelve different ones to keep an eye on and stuff like that. But I already keep an eye on a lot of wrestling as it is. So what's you know what's what's more wrestling for me to look after, especially in a, in, a, in a month where it's going to be uh, on the month it was going to be SummerSlam. So you know SummerSlam and All In. But hey, what's 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 more wrestling? You know you you can never have a you can never have enough wrestling in my when, opinion. When is SummerSlam? SummerSlam I think is in mid August. Nice. And then all in is in late August. Perfect. So maybe uh, uh, towards the tail end of uh, those shows, we can do a wrestling update and we can, you know, preview, you know, stuff across multi platforms too. So absolutely. Uh, and uh, that would be awesome. Yeah. No, it's it's cool that we'll do track and wrestling, and then I'll get together with other people offline and figure out what other sports people are interested in. And um, there's so many sports. We're not obviously going to cover them all. I'm not even going to pretend to do that. Um, uh, <laughs> we'll call each of the different hosts and guests and people can message me here on whispers on Twitch or direct message on Facebook. Um, and, um, you know, I, I will. Uh, I'm happy to have anybody who wants to talk about the Olympics join in. It'll be fun because there'll be people talking about different sports than they usually talk about, or you know, because even Greco-Roman wrestling is still very different than uh, what you normally talk about. And so um, it'll be fun for all of us to talk a little bit of different sports than we're we're used to. And um, and the Olympics are just fun, and we usually have a more of an international audience anyway. So I'm sure that people will find that more interesting. Uh, for in that regards too but thank you everyone for being yeah. you know so amazing it's been such a fun season uh, this is again the spring season finale of season nine uh, we're taking we take the summer off there will be a two-week special for the olympics the first two weeks of august we'll then take a couple of weeks off and then we'll come back um with uh, uh the week after labor day uh, with the first week one of the NFL season. I do want to say stay tuned to facebook.com slash sportsothp and Carol's um, uh, Facebook page as well uh, and his YouTube channel. Um, you know, you can get all those links on sportsothp.com. We're a couple weeks behind on our archives, but I'll be updating that in the next week uh, to get all the episodes up there uh, that are missing. And um, yeah, it, he might do pop-up announcements or talk about... Um, the commanders or maybe even go to training camp or preseason stuff. So, um, you know, the, the network will still be producing stuff, obviously still continue to support champ and Sith, uh, and their endeavors as well. Um, and, uh, uh, I'll throw the champ command one more time up there. Um, and, uh, so there's still lots of podcasts and lots of information coming out from our network, even if our flagship show is taking a little bit of a hiatus, uh, but I really appreciate everybody for being a part of this show. We're so close to our um, our 800 goal. I think we're at 798 or 797, one of those. Um, so um, uh, I'm hoping to hit 800 before the Olympic special, um, and we can celebrate that as well. Um, and uh, Champ, congratulations. I never officially mentioned it on this stream, but three years affiliate is a big deal, and uh, over three years streaming on Twitch now, also a big deal. And so congratulations for that. Uh, for your show um, uh, it's been fun to watch it grow and uh, and uh, the replays up over there and uh, so yeah uh, it's uh, it's been a really fun um, uh, fun couple of years doing this with you so I really appreciate that as well so uh, all, right, all right sounds good and uh, with that we will end our Facebook live uh, go DC team so we'll, we'll talk to you guys on the Olympics and uh, soon and uh, thank you for tuning in on uh, Facebook and watching or listening back later. Okay, good you. Sayonara. Recording stopped. There we go. There's the live stream end.
Um, thank you everyone for joining us on Twitch. We are going to raid our good friend uh, Adrian or Ace Caltor, um, uh, 314 as well. Um, and uh, so if even if you can just throw a lurk tonight, I really appreciate um any support that you guys can give his way uh just even if you have five percent you, know, you can mute your computer go to sleep whatever but he's so close to hitting affiliate he just has got to hit his average over three and so i know that this um this raid's got nine viewers if even half of you guys can stay until the end of stream tonight that would be huge for his numbers um he's just right at that threshold and i, I remember being there and it took me a while to get there and so uh, this could be super helpful for him. So as a favor to me, I really appreciate anyone who can uh, can throw a lurk that way. It would be fantastic. Thank you again, champ. Uh, thank you again for everyone for staying to the end of the show. Um, and there might be a pop-up art stream. There might be a pop-up interview stream. You know, uh, maybe a pop-up IRL stream now that I know that that's possible. So those things are always possible. Don't want to say that they're, they're rolled out, but the, the next official Sports on the Hill podcast uh, will be for the Olympics. and uh, But yeah, thank you everyone. And grab a raid call uh, or a sub raid call if you have the emotes. And with that, I will raid and have a good one.